we're going to be looking at swapping data in C++ today. And so the idea of swapping data is because when we're doing sorts, we have to actually move things around. And when we're moving things around, we actually have to ask ourselves a very important question. Can a computer juggle? And the answer is no. Computers are not smart enough to juggle. Because computers, um, when we juggle, we lose track of at least one up to n of our things that we're juggling. So when we're juggling things, we have two in our hand and n in the air, where n is a number from one to some larger number. And so when we're juggling, we lose track of them. Now, mentally, we're keeping track of it in our mind, but we're only touching two things that we're juggling at the time. And so when we're throwing those bowling pins up in the air, when we're throwing those chainsaws up in the air, whatever we're juggling at the time, we are only actually touching two at a time. All the other ones, we actually have no idea where they are physically. Mentally, we have that spatial awareness we can keep track of them, but the computer's not that smart. A computer only knows when something is when it has a variable referring to it. And so since computers can't juggle, swapping takes more than two hands. To swap variables, it takes at least three hands. And so we have to have a variable attached to that. So that's why we have to ask ourselves that question, can computers juggle? And so we take a look at this on this next slide. We have the idea right here with swapping the two variables. So if we're going to swap the two variables, we have our initial state. We have thing one and thing two. Nice Dr. Seuss reference here. Thing one is holding value one. And thing two, guess what? It's holding value two. Value two that's right. And so thing one is going to send to value two, or thing two, it's going to send value one to thing two. Now thing two is also holding value one. So value uh, thing two is now going to send value two. Oh, no, not value two. It's going to send value one back to thing one. And so now after our swap with only two variables, we have both thing one and thing two, both holding value one. Total waste of time. We don't have a swap. We actually lost data. And so because we lost data, we have to use a separate thing. And so this is where our third one comes in. So we have thing one, thing two, and temp thing. And so temp thing is going to hold nothing. And it's only going to exist inside the method. And then we're going to have thing one is going to send to temp thing value one. And so now temp thing is holding value one, and so is thing one. And then thing two is going to send value two to thing one. So we have temp thing holding value one. We have thing one holding value two and thing two holding value two. But because we have temp thing, we'll say temp thing is going to send to thing two value one. And so at the end of it, we have our final state. We have thing one holding value two, thing two holding value one, and temp thing holding value one and getting ready to be deleted because it doesn't exist after that method. It's a temporary variable. It only exists inside there. So we have some logic that goes behind that. Our method is going to have two parameters. They're ints. They represent the spots we're dealing with. Now, because we're dealing with our generic list that we have built ourselves, we want to make sure those indices are valid. If we're using something like, say, for example, a pre-built data type, like a Java array list or a C array, we don't have to check that validity because it's already built into the type structure. But since they're our own data types, we have to uh, verify they're valid. We need a temp variable of type because we're using that. We perform the swap, and then it's a void type because it doesn't return anything back to us. So that's that basic feature right there for the actual logic of the method. And let's take a look at an example with it for a list. So in a list, we have our ctech list class, obviously by our ctech list type right there. So we have right here our swap of ctech, uh, C++ using a list. And if we look at our swap with list, we have the idea that we are going to have an assert, and we're going to assume that our, we're just checking less than size, I assume we're not passing a negative number. We'll make sure that we're at least that good. Since we're already in bounds, we sh that should be a fairly good assumption to make, but just in case we've done something stupid or math, we'll make sure we don't go out of bounds on the positive side. We then have a temp variable of type called temp, and we put it, since we're using the list, we use our get from index method. And our get from index method just returns that value, stores it in the temp. We call in our set method. Our set method takes index one as its parameter. And its value we're going to assign into index one. We're going to set index two's value. So we're going to get from index from index two. We're going to grab the value from that second spot. And then for our last spot, because again, that's that third hand, we're going to do set to index two, what's now been stored into temp. 
Because again, we go back to that screen. We have the idea that temp has to hold something and it holds what's in one so it can get shoved back into two after two is already even copied into it. So we have the ability to go back through it. The same basic feature works for the array. Obviously, you can see we're in the array here based on the actual method header. The only difference is in an array, instead of using the get from index, we simply use the get method because our CTEC array has a get method instead of a get from index. Otherwise, the code itself is the same. The logic itself is the same. It's just changing the keyword that we're using to access that method. So again, we have the idea that we have a temp variable that holds what's in the first value. We set then the second value into the first spot and then replace the second spot's value with what was inside the first originally from the temp. And that's all we have to do to do the swap part that is used in multiple different uses of sorting data.